If you've been thinking about starting a website and you want to know what is the best website platform, website hosting server, email list, and so much more that you need to use for your website, then stick around. Or if you're just curious and a little bit nosy about the platforms that I use to run my blog and run my business, then you're going to want to stick around too. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Catherine, the creator of The Content Bug, and I'm here to help you follow your passion by growing your audience online. Today, I specifically want to talk about the platforms and services and whatever else you want to call them that I use to run my website, run my blog, run my business, and stuff that I absolutely swear by. I'm gonna be talking about my website platform, my website server, my email list, like I already talked about, but I'm also gonna talk about the ads platform I use, some of my favorite plugins, and stuff like that, that I can't live without. All of that stuff I'm going to break down in this video. I'm hoping to keep it short enough, so stick with me. First, I want to talk about the basics of a website. So when you get a website, you can decide on a self-hosted website or a non-self-hosted website. And if you are brand new into the website world, basically that means it's either you have a platform and you need to find an external hosting server, or you get a website that is already hosted by the platform that you are choosing. So for my example, I'm going to be talking about WordPress because I use WordPress, but I use WordPress.org. It is the self-hosted option of WordPress. If you go to WordPress, you type in WordPress into Google, WordPress.com is going to be the first thing that pops up. You do not want a WordPress.com website. A WordPress.com website is hosted by WordPress. You want a self-hosted website. There are a variety of reasons why I have a blog post all about it that I'll include in the description bar down below. The difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org. I use WordPress.org and I absolutely love it. I think it's the best in the industry out there. I worked in the digital marketing industry previous to starting working for myself. If you did not already know that and we recommended wordpress.org. Always having a self-hosted WordPress site is the way to go. I love it because the customization, you're going to surpass people that are on Squarespace or Wix or Weebly or any of those other places. WordPress is the place to be. Now, when it comes to my hosting, it gets a little bit more complicated because I started out on Bluehost and I just recently moved my website over to GoDaddy and there's a reason for this. So as a beginner blogger, I honestly think that Bluehost is the place to be. It's easy to use. There's one click installation and if you're using WordPress, it's easy peasy. They give you an email address and like everything you need. I highly recommend Bluehost. Plus it's cheap. Okay. It's really, really cheap. But here's the thing. I was on Bluehost for a year and I liked it. But after that year, my website was growing and my website traffic was growing and it turned out that my website was getting slower because the hosting server I was on. And I just used a basic plan within Bluehost. I mean the cheapest plan they had. So I could have upgraded to another plan if I wanted to, but I decided to make the switch and go to GoDaddy because I wanted a higher volume of traffic capability within my website. So I didn't even go with a WordPress option within GoDaddy. I went with some business plan. I'm not sure what it is. I'll include it in the description bar down below, but I went with some other business plan and I have had no problems. My website traffic can continue to grow without ever crashing it. So and that's the main reason why I went from Bluehost to GoDaddy. I know that's a little bit complicated. If you want to compare the two, go ahead and compare the two. I like both of them. I am extremely happy that I'm on GoDaddy now and if you want to be in a place where you can just grow within one platform I I would highly recommend GoDaddy there are a few plugins that I absolutely cannot live without on my website, but I do have a whole entire video talking about the five must have plugins that I like could not live without. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and click the info box right here and watch that video. But a few of my favorite plugins are Yoast SEO, Tracking Code Manager, and Spam Shield, WP Spam Shield. Those three are like absolute must have plugins. I love them. I couldn't live without them. But if you want more information, check out that video. When it comes to my email list, I got started on ConvertKit and I've never switched. I thought about choosing a free option. I thought about going with MailChimp, but after all the research I had done, I knew that ConvertKit was the only place for me. It allows automation and sequences and that customization that can't really be done within MailChimp. It's so easy to use. They have tutorials and a guide to walk you through it when you first get started and I love it. It's 100% worth the price and I pay monthly for ConvertKit and I am so, so excited extremely happy with it. I have several different opt-ins, several different sequences. I'm using their automation sequences. I've got custom tags on all of my subscribers. So let's say that you subscribe to my email list using a 
Hmm. Social media opt-in. So let's say you wanted the 30-day Instagram challenge. If you downloaded the 30-day Instagram challenge, it automatically tags you with an interest in social media, an interest in Instagram, and of course you then get put in a sequence so that emails are automatically sent to you and I do nothing. I absolutely love ConvertKit. I don't think I'm going to switch from it anytime soon and I highly recommend it to you. If you're looking to get started with ads on your website, I might not be the person to go to because I have only ever used one ad platform. I've looked into switching, but I haven't switched yet. So when I got started with my blog, I knew that I wanted to have ads on there immediately so my audience was used to them. I didn't want to wait to build up my audience and then put ads on there because I didn't want them to think that I was just monetizing them and ruining my website. So I had ads in there from the very beginning. And as a beginner blogger, it can be hard to get accepted into ad platforms because typically you need a minimum traffic level except for Google AdSense. So I use Google AdSense for my ads on my website and I've been happy with them. I mean, they don't pay a lot of money. It took me a year to get paid out the $100 because there's a $100 cap that you have to hit. So it took me a year to get there. And now that my website traffic is up enough, I know I can switch platforms. I just haven't yet because I need to do the research first and I just haven't. I recommend Google AdSense if you are a beginner, but once you get above a certain le level of page views, I think it's like either 5,000 a month or 10,000 a month, um, then you can upgrade to different platforms. Okay. If you're trying to monetize your blog with affiliate marketing, there are different platforms you can use like affiliate networks or you can go direct to the source. So I am an affiliate of, I'm not even sure how many companies, at least seven plus companies, and I have gone either direct to the source or I have actually used affiliate networks. And what that means is it's basically a third party. It's a website that hosts all these affiliate programs that you can become a part of. You just search the platform and it shows all the available companies that you can work with and you apply and then you get paid through them. So I am a part of Share a Sale. I have been a part of Share a Sale for ooh, probably over a year now. You know, I've loved it. I've received several hundred dollars from them um, because of the affiliate marketing that I'm doing for the companies that I am working with through Share a Sale. The only thing I'll say is Share a Sale is complicated. I mean, when you first go to Share a Sale, their website, it looks so old, so outdated. I mean, Share a Sale, if you're watching this, please update your website. It is just old and outdated, and there are so many things that could be done to it. So I gotta say, it's a little bit complicated. Once you're actually in there, all you have to do is search for the company that you think you'll want to be a part of and see if they're there and if you don't have any companies that you think you would want to be an affiliate of you can just go by category so let's say you're in fashion you can just search fashion and see what pops up and see what you can become an affiliate of another ads network that I'm actually a part of I'm not sure if I would consider it an ads network because share a sale holds several companies this one is Amazon Associates so I'm a part of the Amazon affiliate program and I mean I'm just an affiliate for Amazon but Amazon has so many products that I become an affiliate of so it's kind of complicated if you would include that as a affiliate network but I'm gonna include it as affiliate network so I am a part of Amazon Associates and this is actually my second time becoming a part of it so when I first got into affiliate marketing I applied for Amazon Associates and I did not use it and if you don't use it if you don't get any clicks if you don't generate any sales within I think it's like the first 90 days or something they'll deactivate your account I didn't use it and they deactivated it and I was like no big deal you know I don't have anything on Amazon to recommend anyways so it's not worth getting like no sales. Since then, I've learned I recommend books, I recommend products, and all that stuff is available on Amazon. Why don't I receive a little bit of money from it? So I am now a part of Amazon Associates again. Just like the ads, I haven't received a payout on my Amazon Associates yet because I haven't made that much money. But honestly, I've only been a part of it for a few months now. So ain't nothing but a chicken wing. I'm gonna break it down into each platform because there are several platforms, of course. So Facebook, I don't use any platform to manage Facebook. Twitter, I don't use any platform to manage Twitter. I just use both of those directly. When it comes to Instagram, I actually have a whole video about the Instagram apps that I have on my phone that I absolutely can't live without. Some of them include Bosco, UNUM, and then there are two other ones that I included in that video, so make sure you check that out by clicking here. And then when it comes to Pinterest, there are two programs that I use. The first one is Tailwind. I live and die 
by Tailwind. Let me tell you my success on Pinterest. Right now I'm reaching 1 million average monthly viewers on Pinterest and that's because of Tailwind. Honestly, it has been my ride or die. Because with Pinterest, you need to be active every single day. You need to be sharing at least 30 pins a day. I mean, I recommend 40 or 50 pins a day. I know that's a lot. But you need to be pinning a ton on Pinterest, and I don't have time for that. So I use Tailwind to schedule all of my pins, plus Tailwind Tribes, ugh, let me tell you. Tailwind Tribes are like group boards held on Tailwind, but people are more likely to actually schedule your pins. So it's not like you're just getting visibility. With group boards, you're just getting visibility. With Tailwind Tribes, you're actually getting repins. Tailwind, 100% worth it. Now, the other program out there for Pinterest that is kind of in comparison to Tailwind is Board Booster. I just started using Board Booster a month ago, and I gotta say, I'm not 100% sure if I am sticking with it. People compare the two of them, Board Booster and Tailwind, they compare them, and I don't think they're that comparable. Because Tailwind, what you do is you schedule pins to be pinned. So you select pins that you wanna pin, and Tailwind will pin them for you. With Board Booster, you are looping pins. At least the program that I'm using, I know they have so many different features, but the one that I am using is looping pins. Tailwind doesn't have that option yet. Tailwind, I really wish you had that option because I would only choose you. But currently I'm using both because I want to loop my pins because I was pinning 50 pins a day, brand new pins a day. And if you think about how many new pins I'm adding to my profile, it is way too many. I'm up to 14,000 pins on my profile already. I knew that I needed to give life to my old pins. So I was like, you know what? I'll try out Board Booster. And I'm currently in the phase where I'm trying it out. With Board Booster, Booster, they loop your pins. So they take your old pins and they kind of repin them again, but not creating a new pin. I mean, it's, it's really complicated how it's done. It's just like cycling through all of your pins on Pinterest. It's interesting, but I do use Board Booster just as a long, long recap there. I get questions because some of my pictures on Instagram have my iPad Pro in them, some of them have my iMac, so I wanna throw this out there and tell you guys that the technology I use is Apple products. I absolutely love Apple products. They play so well together. I can just airdrop from every single device and it makes it so easy peasy, I'm telling you. The real lowdown, I have an iMac for my office and I absolutely love this guy, he's absolutely amazing, but obviously I can't carry him around with me because it's a desktop computer. So I have an iPad Pro that is considered my laptop. I do not have another laptop, I just have my iPad Pro. So when I go and work at coffee shops, I have my iPad Pro. I actually have a keyboard attached, so let me show you guys. I have a keyboard attached that's this. So when it sits upright, it looks like this and I love it, I love it. So I only use Apple products, I've got an iPhone as well, and I'm obsessed with Apple. And the last piece of technology that I like to use is Nikon cameras. So I have two Nikon cameras that I use. I have the one that I'm recording on, which is a Nikon J4. And then I have a Nikon D80, which is my DSLR camera. All of my photos taken on Instagram is taken with my DSLR camera. So the one that I'm currently using for video is for video. My other one is for photos and I'm just a Nikon girl. I'm thinking about switching to Canon in the future, but as of right now, I do not have money for that investment. So I'm happy with Nikon. And that is it for this video. I went over a lot of information, a lot of explanation, and I think I got all the products that I wanted to cover out there. If you have any questions about what the products are, what the services are, I will include them in the description bar down below. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help to support my channel. And I will see you guys back here in another video very, very soon. And that's it. Okay, bye guys.